Now we're going to finish off this problem by finding the expected value of kinetic energy and then checking the uncertainty principle. So to find the expected value of kinetic energy, we just apply the formula. So kinetic energy is equal to momentum squared divided by 2m. And because 2m is a constant, we can just pull this out. So we have this constant times the expected value of p squared. And then in the last video, we found that the expected value of p squared is equal to n plus 1 half times h bar m omega. And then once you cancel these terms out, you see that it's equal to 1 half n plus 1 half h bar omega. And incidentally, this is equal to 1 half times the total amount of energy in the n stationary state. So if you just check the formula, this is actually equal to the energy of the n state. And then incidentally, this is actually equal, also equal to the expected value of the potential. So you can find derivation of why this is equal to uh, 1 half of the total energy from example 2.5. So you can see that the expected value of kinetic energy and potential energy, they are going to be the same. So now we're going to check the uncertainty principle. So the first thing we're going to find is the standard deviation of x. So this is equal to the square root of the expected value of x squared minus the expected value of x and then squared. So based on what we found in the last video, the expected value of x squared, this is equal to n plus 1 half h bar divided by m omega. And then this term here is just zero, so we can just ignore that. And we do the same thing for the expected uh, for the standard deviation of momentum. So we have the expected value of p squared minus the expected value of p and then squared. And we're going to use the result we we got from last time. So this is what p squared is equal uh, the expected value of p squared is equal to, and this is also zero, so we can just ignore it. So now once we now we're going to check the uncertainty principle by multiplying these two standard deviations together. And you see that this n plus one half, there are two of these, so they just you can just get rid of the square root. And then uh, for these constants over here, you can see that some of them will cancel out. So the m omega cancels out. You have two of these h bars, so it's equal to n plus one half h bar. And then you can see that of course this is always larger than or equal to h bar over 2 because n is equal to all uh, integers from 0 to infinity. So it is always the case that this product over here is larger than or equal to h bar over 2. So the uncertainty principle is always satisfied.